started. Thank you everyone for joining. Uh, this is, oops, this is the December group. Let me just make sure all these slides are not incorrect. Uh, one second. Okay, great. Ignore these slides, they're correct. Uh, but anyway, welcome to the December tug meeting. Uh, this is our last one of the year and very exciting. Uh, before we get into the presentations, I want to talk a little bit about the tug for anyone that's new. It's specific to analytics in Tableau. So we've done a couple of design um, sessions, but most of them are focused on ways that we can use Tableau better and create better visualizations. And so all of our spe speeches and, and sessions are geared towards that. Uh, we had planned to do about every six to eight weeks. We get so many speakers that we end up doing it every month. So we did, we did 11 sessions this year, uh, and I think about 11 or 10 or 11 last year. Um, but we do about everything analytical, Tableau desktop, web edit, ask data. We will often have people from Tableau come and speak. So this is a great place to learn about all things uh, in Tableau at the moment. You can use the user group there. Uh, we've got a QR code at the bottom here uh, that'll also be in the recording uh, where you can find all of our upcoming events. We will have the January one up shortly. So you can use that there. Uh, this is a US and APAC friendly meeting. So we've got myself, um, Sadil, uh, and we've also got uh, Prasan who will be here shortly. A little bit about me, I am a desktop specialist, Tableau featured author and community equity task force uh, member, and obviously the leader of this tug. Uh, my Tableau background is really about data storytelling. Um, I view myself as a storyteller that happens to use Tableau, um, but found a home in the data fam around uh, 2019. Um, when I'm not creating visits or hanging out on Twitter, uh, you can find me trying wine, which has become my um, my quarantine habit, if you will, but I've gotten really deep into it. It's a lot of fun. Uh, and then talking sports, uh, obviously all things World Cup at the moment. Hopefully everyone saw the uh, most recent game. I won't spoil it if people want to check that out. Uh, Prasan, I assume, is not here yet. Um so he is a Tableau ambassador, uh, Tableau ambassador, feature author. He's also a part of the Speakers Bureau um, and co-founded the Tableau Buddy Talks uh, Tug, as well as the program itself. Uh, he's been working with Tableau for around three years and is a product engineer with American Express, um, where he does a lot of mentoring and community building for over 250 data professionals. Uh, he is on the nerdy side, so he can try. He's trying out um, different foods, uh, geeking out over anime, um, and and is a new member. So we're really excited to have him join the team. Uh, in Emea, uh, Annabelle is based in Zurich, uh, where it is currently around midnight, so uh, probably a little bit late for her to be on. Uh, but she is the bank. Uh, and she is passionate about all things chocolate and Tableau, based in Zurich, um, but is French uh, as well. So you will hear her French accent in most of our uh, talks. She also co-leads the Data Plus Women Zurich uh, chapter, where you can actually use that QR code to see what they have going on. I believe they already have one set up for January, which will be a really great session for those that want to check it out. Uh, a few quick ground rules, um, not too many that you need to worry about. Um, if you have just comments or want to say this is really cool and interesting, uh, definitely use the chat section. But if you have specific questions for our speakers today, uh, you can use the Q&A section uh, and we will answer those live. Uh, so for the most part, other than that, just enjoy the session. It is being recorded. Um, I'm sure you got that uh, very loud buzz when you joined us. Uh, it will be on our Tableau YouTube channel. And so we'll send that out usually uh, in the next few days. So by the end of the week, maybe early next week, we should have that up and running. Uh, also feel free to use hashtag analytics tug or mention the analytics tug Twitter channel uh, during the session if you like. 
with that, we've got um, a great session going on. Um, we just did our welcome. Uh, what I wanted to do this this for our final event of 2022 is go back and look at some really cool visits um, back during the year. We've got two people who produced some of those visits. I will do a quick uh, wrap up of our year toward the end, but want to save most of our time for our speakers today. Um, so we've got two visits, the Iron Viz 2022 from Jade and the Vizzy Awards Du Bois Challenge uh, from Chimdi. With that, we're going to start with Jay. Jay is a Tableau social ambassador, four times visit of the day, and senior visual cons analytics consultant at Analytic Vision. Um, she has been using Tableau since 2017 and enjoyed it every step of the way. Um, and living in Greenville, South Carolina, enjoys hiking, volleyball, all things Tableau. Uh, I also will note, if just in case she doesn't, this was a top five biz. Uh, so you are in the presence of greatness. And with that, um, we'll turn it over to Jay to talk about this new viz. Hi, guys. Uh, thanks, all. Thanks for having me. So excited to uh, hang out with you guys in this group. Um, as you mentioned, my name is Jade, and I'm in Greenville, South Carolina. Um, I'm going to walk you through my submission for the February Iron Viz this past year, the Visualizing the Arts. So I'll go ahead and share my screen. All right. Can you guys see everything? Yep, you're all set. Cool. Move this out of the way. So for um, visualizing the art, this is my Viz on Tableau Public. It's called Lost But Not Forgotten. And I will talk about my inspiration, how I got here to this point, um, the data that I used, and then I'll go into some specifics about how I built the Viz. So backing up earlier in February or January, I guess, um, we had the Visualizing the Arts qualifier. And at first, this theme was very intimidating for me. One, I've never participated in Iron Viz before, and two, I don't know if you guys know this, but Tableau uses data, aka numbers. And I was like, how am I supposed to, you know, get art data? It was just tricky for me. So I wasn't, I wasn't going to do it at first. But so as Sadal mentioned, I work for Analytic Vision. And this is a consulting firm out of Atlanta. We build Tableau dashboards, do data engineering, different things like that. But um, our founder, Nelson Davis, who's a former uh, Tableau visionary, he was like, hey, if you guys participate and you get 50% of the points scored by the judges, we'll give you $400. If you make it in top three, we'll give you 10 grand on top of the 10 grand that Tableau gives you and we'll throw a party. And you can see my response. I was like, whoa, okay. <laughs> I've never worked for an employer who cared so much about like our professional development with Tableau and just pushing ourselves and challenging us. So this was a huge motivator uh, for me to finally like, you know, head down, do this. And so from there, I just talked with friends and family about, you know, different themes. I tried to get ideas from different people that maybe didn't even know what Tableau or what this was. Um, and I bounced around a couple ideas and ultimately uh, was like, after talking to my husband, Patton, he was thinking like, why don't you visualize stolen art? And I was like, okay, that could be cool. You know, it just, where were the most common like thefts? Where did they happen? Different. I could kind of see the story forming in my head. So I shared that idea with Nelson and he ate it up and we had a little brainstorming session. And so this was another piece of my inspiration. He shared with me this New York Times um, article, The Don Wall. And what this does, I mean, it's very sophisticated, but as you scroll, it has a map and takes you through the journey of how these two climbers made it to the top of this mountain. And obviously my dashboard doesn't look like this, but this is the inspiration. So from here, I was like, okay, what I wanna do is I wanna take the viewers of my dashboard on a journey um, through an art heist. And where did they start? What, you know, what did they take? Where did they end up? Where did they go? Did the police catch them somewhere? That was kind of the inspiration and story I was developing in my head. So onward to find the data to make this viz come alive. Easier said than done. 
Uh, I did find Interpol's Stolen Works of Art database. And basically it's like a search engine. You can search for different things as if you um, come in here, but I couldn't download the data. And so I even emailed them directly and was like, hi, can I have uh, some of your data? And they were like, mm, no. So <laughs> that was not great. Um, so from here, I kind of lost inspiration. I was like, man, I can't find a lot of data. And I really felt like for my first Iron Viz, I felt like I just had to have this massive data set and I couldn't find it. Um, but I actually talked with Karen Henson, who was the ATUG uh, user group, Atlanta Tableau user group um, leader at the time. And she was an Iron Viz judge. And she was saying, no, like the data set doesn't have to be huge. It just needs to be quality over quantity. And so, yeah, I thought about it a little bit more, but I ultimately got inspired when I saw This is a Robbery on Netflix. We talked about the world's biggest art heist. It's the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum heist, and they still don't know who did it. And so if you're into this kind of stuff or you need a mystery or a documentary to watch, I always recommend this. It was so good. And that's when my uh, inspiration struck again. I was like, all right, cool. I'll start high level and then I'll go from macro to micro and focus specifically on this really crazy robbery. So from there, uh, oh, what was also cool, Google Arts and Culture, this is another inspiration. They talked about this specific heist and they have a Google Street View story of this where you could like come in and use Street View to interact. And I was like, now I know how I'm gonna do this. That, this is how I'm gonna get the effect I want. So I ended up using Miro. Um, this is like an online whiteboarding tool. So people process and uh, design in Tableau differently. Some people go straight into Tableau and start building, playing with data. But I had to do a lot of research and kind of pull data together. And so I already knew what the data looked like. I wanted to have a tool where I could draw. So here I just have my research. I have links to my Wikipedia pages, any articles I found. Um, Again, the inspiration here with the New York Times and then this infographic, this was a, the story for this particular heist, where they came in, where how long did they spend time and just their journey. And this is where I wanted to recreate things. And that led, if I'll zoom out, into me kind of wireframing what I wanted it to look like. I knew I wanted the color scheme to be dark and kind of mysterious. Uh, I wanted to use red, just to like grab a boldness. I wanted, like I said, to go from high level. So uh, where were the most common locations for highs, the most common artists, let's do a bar chart here. How long did it take for any recovered or any stolen artworks to become recovered? Did the police find them? So this, I used Miro to kind of map out what was in my head and get a good story flow. And then I, um, these are all screenshots of what I, you know, different stickies or whatever that I wanted to happen. And from there, I was like, okay, my data's ready. Let's do this in Tableau. So now I'll switch gears and show you my dashboard. So I'll say all of my ex um, data sources are Excel. So I took some I wish I knew. I need to watch. Um, if anyone's going to the Tableau Fringe Festival on Friday, there's a session on web scraping, and I'm going to watch it because uh, that would have been easier. But basically, I just copied some tables for, from Excel or from Wikipedia to Excel. And then it was really nice because my data set wasn't huge. It was manageable. I could kind of clean it and make sure I pulled in like certain things. And I could model it the way that Tableau could best read it. And I'll kind of explain that later. But so my visual is long form. You scroll as you get immersed in the story. I have my title, a little subtitle, and then this was just to immerse the reader, um, just some little context to try to put the reader in the shoes of a person who might see this, you know, um, super awesome piece of artwork in a museum that's worth millions. Should I take it? Should I not? Um, and then I gave a description about what art theft is, how long it's been around, and we have some KPIs at the top. These are all individual sheets and they are connected to an Excel where I just have the KPI and then the value, but this could definitely just be text. Um, this is what I was talking about where I made my Excel data source work for me. At first, I was trying to say, 
or visualize that only 10% of stolen works were actually recovered. And I wanted to do a waffle chart. And at first I was doing this all on Tableau and trying to do ranks and indexes. I was like, wait a minute, what am I doing? So I ended up just uh, making my life easy. I'll show you my Excel source. So I have a waffle tab and I just have rows from one to a hundred category, red or white. Cause I knew that I'd pulled that statistic from an article. I knew that was the number, let's make it easy. And I built it off of that. I can show you guys. So this is X and Y. I'll have to, maybe I can send a link to the uh, blog post that I read to make these little guys happen, but that's just to get the shape of it to be in the diamond. And the color is what I was talking about, the value um, from earlier, like is it white or is it red? And then I have um, KPI talking about if they are recovered, is the criminal found guilty and prosecuted? That's only 1.5%. So just some high level KPIs. Um, and then I dug into some famous cases from around the globe. This is just a simple map. I've got country on a mark and then city on a mark. And you can hover and see where we're talking about and how many art thefts happened. You can click and it will highlight, we'll do one that's bigger. So for example, Boston, it highlights down here what particular art pieces that they're talking about. And I use annotation to kind of allude to the story I'm later gonna tell about the Isabella Museum. So what's going on in Boston? More on, more on that later. Then over here, I have which artists had the most painting stolen. I have a dual axis where I have the shape and the line just to give it some definition. Um, also, since the data source had multiple or had tons of um, artists on here, I used a filter to sort by a condition, so the top 10 by number of thefts. So it would just give me a smaller list instead of showing too many. And then I also used a Vizen tooltip to get, what's better on here, to get that list that pops up. So if I want to see the Van Gogh pieces, Seven were stolen, but what were they? And you can list that out um, with the Vizen tooltip feature. So then I look at, so of these stolen artworks, how many are still lost versus found? Um, this, I just used an index calculation to um, count, or just, it forces, yeah, it forces the view to count how many items, because if you take this off, well, they all are stacked on top of each other. So this gives it a measure value of an axis to count all of them on so you can see them all at once. And then the min zero is a placeholder to create another axis to where it fills the entire view. Otherwise, it's going to be all scrunched together, which looks OK. Um, but I wanted it to fill the view and just be a little bit bigger. I didn't like how small different things. I played with a couple options, like maybe making the size bigger. but Ultimately, it cut off the shape, and so I didn't like that. So just adding a min zero to create an axis and just hiding it is a good way to kind of manipulate that. And then, so I'm also using set actions. Um, actually, I don't think I'm using them here. Just kidding. Uh, it's just the highlight actions. So I've got a highlight on country and city and um, artists to say, OK, of the Monet's, where are they and what are they? So that you can easily uh, highlight and see what's going on. Uh, a little more detail, estimated value, date stolen, different things like that. And so if these were found, these red options, like the Mona Lisa, how long did it take to recover the stolen art? This section was interesting because I envisioned in my head creating a beautiful art, art diagram. Um, I'd never made one before. And it was a challenge I wanted to do. I was all excited about it, but y'all, I could not make it happen. It was taking me so many hours. I was getting frustrated. And I was working on this um, on a ski trip with my husband and he can ski snowboard all day. I'm done about half day because I fall a lot. So I was snowboarding in the morning and then working on Iron Viz in the afternoon. And it got to the point where I was working on this arc for so long. Um, he had gotten back from the slopes 
and was like, hey, what do you want to do for dinner? For dinner? And I'm like, you know, I'm working on this. I was getting frustrated. And then I had to take a step back and say, okay, Iron Viz, I want to go for it. It's important, but it's taking away from time with my husband, uh, taking away from vacation. That's not a trade-off I want to make. And so I was like, a slip graph will tell the exact same story and it's way easier to make. So I just decided to go with the uh, horizontal slope graph. And you can still easily see like this, this painting in particular, you could hover and see that it was recovered. It was stolen in 1940 and it wasn't recovered until 2012, 72 years later. Um, I use set actions here. So if you wanted to click and see a little bit better, because there's so many lines, if you wanted to see where each of these go, you can click and um, have it visually pop out for you. Or if you wanted to start over, you could clear these highlights and click and check some things again. Just a little interactivity for the user. So from here, like I said, going from macro to micro, of these 113 famous art heists that we looked at, there is one that has been deemed the number one greatest of all time, and that's the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum heist, the one that the Netflix special is about. So for here, I really focus in um, on that particular thing. How many thieves were there? How many pieces did they steal? What's the estimated value? Minutes to the crime. So these are just um, little individual sheets with icons. I think I put, yeah, I use the shape and the color for as a space so I could make the color the same color as my background to show up on here, or a different color as my background to show up better. But I've got a shape and then a label set to the bottom to give you that uh, space below. So after the KPIs, I look at the timeline and here's where it gets complicated. And I'll show you, um, it's funny because it did not work in desktop, but it works in, um, in public, so, or on the web. It's like, oh, you have to embed Google Street in an iframe. It's like, well, do you technically? Because it works. Um, what this does is I have a timeline and I used Ryan Sleeper, Playfair, Playfair Data's article on how to build a timeline for inspiration. So right now you can hover and see like at what time did they enter? There's a mystery that happened at 132. Now they're in the blue room at 140. You can just go down like this and see, but you also have the option to be fully immersed. So I have here, um, Oh, reload. A Tableau map. And I've got each of the rooms that they entered or stages of the crime, and it'll walk through. So by default, we've got where they entered, which is this door right here. But you can click, so example, when they go to the blue room, clicking this updates uses a, um, just a filter to filter the um, this sheet here and apply things using a dashboard URL action to do this. And it also when you hover, uses a set action to update the timeline at the top to show you where exactly in the timeline this happened. So they were in the rooms, the early town room, they went in there multiple times. So they were, you can see that in the timeline at the top. Um, you can also read exactly what happened. What did they do in this room? What do the cops know? What do they not know? And you have the ability using Street View to look around and explore for yourself and go on. What's pretty cool is I think it's number five. Oh, maybe number four. Oh, maybe not. Maybe number six. <laughs> number three. Okay, here we go. So I can go into this more if you guys want. Um, but I used the URL actions and specifically told it a rotation and location and different things to when they generate this Google Street View point to a certain spot in the room, because I wanted them to say, wow, when I look here, I've entered room three, the Dutch room, you can see the empty painting missing, which I thought was pretty fun. The URL action was very interesting. I had, I ended up using um, Stack Overflow and an article that Ben Jones wrote in 2008 <laughs> uh, that described how URL actions and just URLs themselves work. 
especially with Google Streets, that was super helpful and a very big learning journey for me. Fun stuff. I can show you the pieces of it. So I couldn't just copy and paste Google Street iframe code. Like I could go and search Gardner Museum. It takes you inside. I can't just copy their embed code because it's no longer supported in Tableau. We'd have to use their API. Um, so that's why I had to go with the custom URL. And basically you just break it up by entering the coordinates. And so the filter actions and using the fields of my data source, I'm able to tell it like this room's latitude, this room's longitude. Um, the layer is just telling it to be a street view. The zoom in level is just how far and out do you want the frame that you're looking at to be. Um, you can customize the street window, the street view window. Like I was saying before, the arrangement, the rotation, so turning on the like axis where you want to see if you want to tilt it, if you want to zoom in more, and then pitch. I left all of those as zeros and just focused on the rotation since I wanted to uh, have the viewer immediately face the empty frames of the stolen art. And then again, you put in the Latin longs for the street view code with that CBLL. You can set your language. And then this gives you um, the embed selection to say, like, just show me the map and not the entire Google site. So that was really fun, a lot of back and forth to learn. I had done something similar for a client, but not to this magnitude. And so that was a fun and hacky process. <laughs> From here, so we know what the criminals did. We know their route. We know how they explored through the museum, but what did they take? So here I use Tableau parameters and what's called pagination to let the user click these arrows and go through the different pieces of art. It'll show you a picture and then some description too. It's funny because some of the art was very valuable, like this is 100 million, and some stuff was not valuable at all. It was only, yeah, I think it was not even worth anything. They were just grabbing things at some point. It's very interesting. And then at the bottom, I just have a little thing that's discover more. So Yes, you've interacted with the viz, you've learned a little bit, but if you want to dig in further, um, we have links to the museum itself, that Netflix documentary, the Google immersion walkthrough that I showed you, and then Interpol if you really care specifically about uh, stolen art. And then I left the readers with a quote, art should be something that liberates your soul, provokes the imaginations and encourages people to go further and just to remember to respect it. And of course, always important to list your sources at the bottom. But that's just a very fast overview. Um, I would say that for Iron Viz, if you're thinking about participating next year, or just doing a Viz, um, this was probably 70, 30 for 30% 30 complex and 30% or 70% things I had done before, things I knew. I didn't want to make it. I wanted to challenge myself and try different things, but I didn't want to overdo it where it was too complicated that a reader um, couldn't easily follow through and play with it themselves. But I'll stop talking. <laughs> Any questions, thoughts, anything you want me to dig into a little bit more? I don't want to take up too much time. Oops. This is this is great. Um, as you can, you're seeing lots of uh, virtual applause. Uh, oh, good. <laughs> because there's a lot of really cool stuff here, and I also need to check out the, the robbery. I I wasn't aware of that one, and I'm always looking for extra Netflix uh, information oh, yeah. and, and things to look at. Uh, also, a big Ocean's Eleven fan, so this is like real world Ocean's Eleven. That sounds awesome. <laughs> um, I'm curious, maybe going back, you, you said a couple of things that were really interesting. Um, one was some of the trade-offs you made for really to prioritize your family over this Iron Reels thing. Um, are there other things you might have done differently, like about the process um, when it comes to making this viz? So I actually gave a session for like the Iron Viz. Um, preview show, I guess. And they, what my topic was time management with this. And so mm. every person 
loves Tableau differently and wants to spend time with it differently. Me personally, I spent 30 to 40 hours on this. And that to me was just good timing one because um, like I said, I was on vacation already. So I used half the time of vacation while I wasn't on the mountain to do this. Um, but I think it's important just to know your why for doing the qualifier. Um, because if it, you shouldn't be trading off time, I don't think with family and different things or your job, um, you shouldn't be spending a month, you know, 80, sure. 90, 100 hours unless you just really, really want to. I think that's defining your why. Do you want to push yourself? Um, and so as far as compromising, I think I had to learn, like the biggest thing for me was this, uh, I wanted to build an art chart, right? That was my challenge. Did I do it? No, mm -hmm. <laughs> but I think I challenged myself in many other ways. Like I chose to spend more time figuring this out because this was my biggest inspiration that I wanted to pull for the users. That's awesome. Uh, and yeah, look, someone had a similar question about how long this took you. Um, so that was, that was good to hear. Yeah, uh, I can, are there other, other things? Oh, great. Can you feel free to put that in the chat? Cause I think that's a, that's a really helpful resource for people. Um, I'm going to highlight this as I reflected on my experience because I was number four, top three goes to finals and I was number four, like how bittersweet. <laughs> and so I definitely had an up and down moment, but I highlight this to say like, um, I do give a timeline. How long did this take me? The data took a lot of time, more than I thought it would. That's the hardest part to me, um, design, visuals, and then challenges. So there's also a written form of this if anyone wants to check it out. Yeah. Maybe one, she's looking at time. Yeah, maybe one more question before we, we transition. Um, and I may, I may have put this same question to both of you, but uh, one person kind of noted like they wouldn't even know where to start. And I know a lot of people huh. spend weeks, you know, just trying to figure out what they're going to do, even though I know Tableau does a great job of giving us a topic that we can use. Um, I think people tend to struggle like, okay, how am I going to make this like what I want to be in a really awesome biz? How, one, I guess, what made you stick with, I mean, obviously the show kind of inspired the biz, but what made you stick with this as your topic? And maybe something you would say to people who are trying to figure out what they what their next biz should be. I would say that if you come up with a topic and you get inspired by it, but you can't find data, don't let that defeat you. I would encourage you to keep thinking and talk to your coworkers that do this too, talk to friends and family that don't know what Tableau is and say, I'm trying to visualize art. What's a question about art? What's something that you would want to know? Because before I was gonna do stolen art in my head, I wanted to do um, art programs in schools and see how that impacted people growing up. Did it impact their careers? You know, do based on socioeconomic status, um, do they offer art programs or not? But I could not find that data. I was very passionate about it. Like this could be a really awesome, more impactful viz but I couldn't find the data. And so uh, I just kept talking to people and letting my, gave myself a couple of weeks to think of a theme. Um, and then when I found the data, even though it was small, um, like I said, I think we're only, it's only 113 rows really. And so don't get intimidated that the, your data has to be gigantic for it to be the qualifier, um, Iron Biz, because it's more about quality over quantity in my opinion. Yeah, no, I, I love that. And someone, I think it was Simon Beaumont said something that was really interesting about how like so many of the winning visits and top three visits are just, you know, bar charts, line charts, you know, some of the slope chart stuff that you did, you know, they're not using extraordinary visits. It's really more about the story, um, yeah. which I think is really inspiring for people that may not feel like they have the skill set, quote unquote, to um, put something together like this. I mean, I think the same with yours. I think there's a beauty in the kind of simplicity of what you have. Obviously the embed probably took a little bit longer to figure yeah. out, but but there's a lot of, of visits that, you know, a lot, I think a lot of people could do in this chart. It's just about putting the story together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I said, I think 70, 30 with simple versus complexity or like things that I had done before versus challenging myself, uh, yep. keeping it simple, like you said. And yeah. I know that, 
uh, Chimney and I were talking. He doesn't like to do this. He's like, open up Tableau and let's go. But I really like, whether it's on paper, PowerPoint, whatever, I use Miro, but really wireframing out the story helps me uh, figure out what vis visuals to use and flow of a story. And feedback is most important. I didn't have as much of a separation at one of my first um, innovations of this. And so I sent an early version of my dashboard to some of my coworkers who use Tableau. I was like, read this, respond to it, you know, let me know, try to break it, whatever. And they gave me a lot of awesome feedback that I really think elevated it um, for my final publish. So, yeah, yeah, and I tend to uh, uh, I tend to work more like you. I'm a big whiteboarder because yes. I struggle. Like if I go into Tableau, I feel like I have to like execute stuff, and I get boxed mm -hmm. into like the things that I always do. So it ends up being the same kind of process. In the whiteboard, it's blank. Yeah, I'm assuming Miro starts probably as like a blank yes. sheet so blank that you canvas. just kind of put yeah. stuff on. Yeah. And so I was able cool. to like look at, get inspired by other people and I don't know. Yeah. It's fun. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, you should definitely also throw that Miro uh, link in there as well. I think people could get a lot out of that. Um, yeah. But cool. With that, we will transition. I'm going to share this back. Um, and we can bring up, we can bring Shimdi to the stage. So um, Shimdi is, shoot, I lost my, you know. There we go. All right, Shimdi is a five-time Biz of the Day winner. Um, fun fact, he was a speaker in February where he was a four-time Biz of the Day winner. So making a lot of great moves. Um, Six-time busy winner, Tableau Public Ambassador and Data Viz Manager at Post Media. Uh, he believes in harnessing the beautiful Data Viz design to make users more receptible to visual insights, which is exactly what we want to do here. Uh, so in fighting the battle against Excel export requests and basic tables one Data Viz at a time, aren't we all? Uh, as, a chim as an artist, Chimdi en enjoys Constantly experimenting with different visualization styles and techniques by leveraging Tableau in combination with other tools. Um, I had the great fortune of helping um, Alan and the, um, <clears throat> the team work on the Du Bois Challenge Viz Review. And this was you know, an absolutely stunning viz. So you guys are in for a treat. Uh, with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Chemde to go through this viz and, and his inspiration for it. Awesome. Thanks, Adele. Definitely appreciate that introduction. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining in. I'm just going to go ahead and quickly share my screen. And we'll be going over my Dubois Gallery Viz, which I built as part of the, the Dubois Challenge in February. And it just kind of went on to do a few things. I'm really happy with it. And I hope that you can learn something from this today. So let's go ahead. All right, so I'm just going to quickly run through uh, an agenda here. I'm going to talk a little bit about like my inspiration for the Viz, you know, how that came around, the tools and the techniques. And then we'll just sort of jump right into it like um, Jay did. We'll just do a walk through, maybe a run through, just probably go through really quickly uh, and just talk a little bit and then kind of share some things that have kind of been birthed out of this Viz and some of the cool things we've got. Uh, going on the background that you can probably, you know, get into and have some fun while learning uh, Tableau. So uh, in terms of my inspiration, like obviously we know we've got the Dubois Challenge on Twitter and, you know, last February, Sekou Tyler, Alan Hillary and AJ Starks, they did their usual posts of how, you know, get in there, get involved. We got all the resources. And that was my first time actually getting to uh, perform or perform or to viz with that challenge. So I thought I would just go maybe do like one one of the visits. I think there were a total of about seven. And then I went into the repository, Edge's repository, his GitHub is filled with like the images, the data sets. And I realized like, man, there's just so much cool stuff. And so as I was exploring those pictures and those photos and those portraits, 
you know, they have different subject themes, they have different art styles and design styles that you can kind of see. So it's, you know, lots of visual um, stimulation was going on. And I kind of realized I'm not going to be able to pick one viz to do. And that was essentially how the idea for a gallery was birthed is like, we can do this kind of thing in Tableau. Let me kind of think of a way to see how that can be executed. And of course, you go into Google, you type out a few things. And then I landed over here on this particular gallery at the North Carolina State University as part of the GIS week, which is essentially like a, a time period that's dedicated to analytics and kind of diving deep and kind of exploring a few things there. And out of that initiative, this came to be. I'll just quickly get into it for us. Um, so this page here, this was like the first thing that I saw where I was like, I like how this is laid out. Let me see if I can check it, do something similar. We have the layout, exhibit name, you know, Dubois. You can kind of scroll, see it's a mixture of his work and similar types of work. They've got the introduction of what's going on here, the visual, and then you can click into it to see um, the particular vis itself and of course read on more. And then you want to go to the next one. You can hit next, it takes you to that next one, hit next, it takes you to that next one, and so on and so forth. So hopefully when you see this, you can kind of start to make those connections as to like, okay, this, this, you can see the transition and translation into the Dubois viz. One thing that I thought maybe I would change about this is we're scrolling, you know, here there's a lot of scrolling. And, you know, normally at least it's 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 vertical. People are used to scrolling vertical, but I decided why not just keep it into one frame and then just add some navigation. So that was something that I did differently. But, uh, you know, going from here, this was a really good um, starting point for me in terms of putting the viz together. And so the other piece of it too was, um, you know, I've never really been extremely interested in, in and black history and like racism and things like that back in those days. Because when I was younger, my mindset was, you know, I my people stayed in Africa. I I volunteered myself to fly out there. So why do I care? Right. I had that 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 mentality. But over time you start to realize like, you know, black history and history is all connected, right? So that kind of started to make me think about a few things. And then like during COVID, I spent a lot of time like inside you know, and then just reading stuff and looking into stuff. And so, you know, I was already in a mental state where there was that natural curiosity about like, you know, my heritage, my background, I'm a black man, I'm an African man, I live in Canada, what is going on here, right? So those kind of thoughts, right? Getting to see Dubois and how he's exploring like just the, 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 the lifestyles, the experience of, you know, black people back when slavery was there. That to me was something that I felt, maybe here's an opportunity for me to actually get involved and understand like some of this history and just not be so ignorant. So that was another part of it. And of course, I love data viz. Um, I think it's beautiful. I love it in all forms. And so when you look at his, his pieces, they're really intricately done. There's a lot of detail there that essentially like it pulls you in. And so just looking at those, I just knew like this is something that's going to take a lot of my time. And I was definitely more than happy to, you know, get into it. Uh, as far as the tools and techniques that I used, obviously Tableau being the main one that that kind of carried the whole thing through. And then I combined it with Illustrator. Um, I mean, I used to be obsessed with the tool, even though it's a bit complex. Um, and now it's uh, when I went from Illustrator, you can do this. The the you can do the same thing in Figma, but at the time I used Illustrator, and who knows uh, what's going to happen to Figma. But essentially. If you don't have Illustrator and you want to start, kind of do something like this, uh, um, Figma would be the equivalent. Uh, as far as techniques goes, honestly, nothing special. If you've like dug into the workbook, you kind of see like it's just like some stuff, pages on pages, and then using some of Tableau's functionality as like design stuff to create some effects. I like to do that type of stuff mainly because you know I, I think of myself as a person that just likes design. And so I don't want to limit myself to a specific kind of tool. And I like to see what are the limits that I can push in each one. And, you know, when you talk to a few people about like Tableau and how they feel about it, there's a lot of people that think Tableau is just not a design tool. You can't do a lot with it. But 
I was able to see from my experience, right, in, in creating some of these business, there's like little things we can do in Tableau to create some little effects. And it's it's difficult. It's not it's not like straightforward, but it's kind of it was kind of cool to get that experience there. So if you're going through it, a lot of it is not very technical. It's just more creativity and using like, you know, background borders, you know, things like that to, to create effects in the visit. And so now I'm just gonna pop in to the actual viz on Tableau Public and just sort of go through some of the things that are in here and edit. So we see here, this is the viz, this is the first page. You know, as we saw before, it's essentially just like a gallery layout. So as normal, when you go to like any gallery or, you know, art place, you're going to have to see some sort of information about like the artist, maybe their inspiration, their life, their history. And so I wanted to kind of give that sort of thing here where you can click in the information. You can see a picture of Dubois. He looks a lot older here. I just sort of wanted to kind of put a recent memory or picture of him there. Um, majority of the things you see on Google are from the 1900s. And I just felt that, you know, as a way to kind of modernize the whole thing that I was trying to do with my gallery, I kind of put a, a, a recent picture there. And then there's a few links you can kind of click out to explore Dubois. You can check out the challenge. You can go to the gallery. And this is just a text box um, with a, a, this is a container with an image and the text box. And it's just basically hide and show. That's that's what's being done here. This is a container with everything in it. And this button is an image that was also made in Illustrator. And I just imported the image and added um, the, the button, added the show hide button with the image as the icon for the button, sorry. And then here we have the layout. We have the individual visits just sort of laid out you know, in, in, a, in a window fashion. And each one of these charts, all that's going on here is, as you can see, it's a, it's a navigation button. So we drag it into the view and then we're using containers to line it up so that it's evenly distributed here. And then we're just doing the same thing. We create another row and then we put those two into a container and stack them on top of each other. So that way, what happens is, you know, we're putting the, pictures which are just exported from the visits themselves we export this photo we put it in a folder we add in the navigation button and then we're editing that button to have it show as the image for that viz and that way when we see the image we click on the viz and then we're basically just telling tableau to navigate to whatever number that this is and you know this is just the layout that i kind of created for the gallery that helped me you know keep track of everything so navigation buttons show hide relatively basic stuff but as you can see it can help us do some pretty cool things and then we are able to go to the next page over here same idea it's the navigation button that is just set to navigate to the second landing page for the gallery and then the same idea was used to create you know, these layers of, of the, of the gallery. And so from there, I guess I'll kind of talk a little bit about some of the individual visits themselves, because one of the interesting things that I found and not just myself, but even some of the other people on Twitter, we kind of acknowledged how, when you're looking at some of these visits, it's like how you envision it coming out to fruition, how you think about building it usually doesn't end up being how you actually get to build it because some of them looked so easy to do. And then you start to do it and you realize it's actually not that easy to do. So for stuff like that, I'm going to try to, let me look at this one here. This one is an interesting one where it looks difficult, but for me, it was actually extremely easy. And the reason is, this is like a cool thing that I started to play around with. And a lot of people do this too. This is just um, map layers with shapes. And so the bulk of the lifting was done in Illustrator where I had to figure out a way to actually create these shapes there. So what we have is essentially, maybe I can show you, I hope it's still embedded um, in, the, in the workbook. 
Oh, there we go here. So if you look over here, essentially, I just created a shape for each of the individual years. So one, two, three, four, five, six. These are all different shapes in Illustrator. And then we export them into our Tableau repository. And essentially, we're just using this field here, which is just a, a make point for map layers. We drop it in the view. And then we're assigning a shape for each year using the shapes that we created in Illustrator. So again, in Tableau, you can literally see one field, color, boom, 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 and we're done. But Illustrator, you know, because I'm fairly comfortable in it, that's why this part was easy. And I actually sit, saw someone else who did it, I guess you can say the proper way, where they actually built it in Tableau. I don't quite remember her name, but that was really impressive to me because I know like I, I kind of cheated with mine. But anyways, that's just an example of one thing. Um, let's see, what else can we look at? So something like this one here, maybe I'll talk into this. I kind of have a confession. So this is this this is multiple sheets. I, I don't know if anyone has noticed that, but basically I can break this out, right? Ideally, I would want to have done this using something like data densification. But of course, you know, at that time, I really was not committed to getting deep into it. And so this is, for example, something that I would do differently. But, you know, someone can look at this and wonder, like, how, how did he, like, make this stuff connected? I didn't do that. I just built it separately. I mean, guaranteed, I had to do mathematics here where I took the total length that's supposed to be here, aka 2255, and then I had to sort of cut it out, like, you know, split some here, split some here, measure the length of this arc, measure that length mathematically. And so there is some accuracy there with respect to what it's showing, but there are ways, like, I think data densification, that's the first thing that comes to mind. We can use that to probably build this out. So that's the second one. And then just one last one I want to show you is the one that was my actual favorite is this over here. One thing I actually forgot to mention, right? So you can, you've seen how we're, we're, we're navigating the um, gallery. We can essentially go left and go back right. So I just wanted to show that, that experience navigating. And then for each um, portrait that we see here, because part of the goal was to like, uh, modernize some of these visas. What I've done is I included the original, again, show hide buttons. There's a lot of that here. So this is another button, show. And then we have a, a introduction, introductory text that you can read to see what's going on, but you can also then go ahead and click this button to view the original. So that way, you know, if you're kind of curious about what looks different from the modern version versus the older version. You can sort of do that. And I also wanted to make sure that people had an opportunity to explore the actual work of Du Bois. I didn't think it made sense for me to represent his work without actually giving them a channel to go to the real deal. So I was you know, able to do that here. And that way you can kind of see like the original work in its form with literally like all the wear and tear. And I think that's really cool. But anyways, for this one, you'll see there's a lot of detail here. And I specifically chose this because I wanted to see like how close can we come to the original. And so when you look at it, it's like, you know, it's, it's not exactly the same, but I'm really proud of how close it came. Like this is literally like container text box, text box. We're building everything from scratch. This is supposed to be a poster that's here. I literally had to type out the whole thing. So, you know, that was, that was, uh, a bit of a long one, but I think it came out really nicely. And yeah, we, we we made some tweaks to it, like the little lines here that were connecting the charts. We took that away because, you know, I, I felt that that's a great thing to have there, but I didn't think it added any value for the users when looking at it. I think they'd actually see things less. So I took that out and I find this is quite a bit clean. And um, if you ask me what was the favorite one to make, it was this particular one. I don't know why something about it just kind of, you know, is, is really cool to me. So that's basically it. There's a total of, in this gallery, 20, I believe. And the way we selected it is this particular one is like freestyle using the Du Bois style. 
this is what was part of the challenge some of these guys and then all these other ones they're actual original works of Dubois so I just wanted to go over that that way you know like there's 19 originals and then one that's just like his style and so of course we have the hashtag we have the data source for AJ and um from this viz, you know, again, as I mentioned, it was the favorite viz of the year at the last TC. So that was like a really great experience for me. I was extremely thankful. Like, you know, I, I wrote a bit about my experience with that in, in the DVS. There's an article there, which I'll share. But basically, I, I was in my chair um, at work and I just I had the conference playing in the background. And I, I, I wasn't really listening, but like I just heard my name and I looked at the screen and I just about fell out of my seat because like I didn't really think that, you know, there was really much to this. So I guess this is just my way of, you know, like saying thank you, because um, that to me was really unexpected. Uh, but it, it really means a lot to me. I think out of all the visits I've won, like favorite visit of the year is like the most important. So, you know, I just want to say thank you for that. And um, moving out from the viz back to the slides just to spend some time thinking about like what's next for this, because like I said, there are a few things that have come out of this. And um, for those who don't know, we have a Dubois challenge every February. And um, ever since I did this bit, I was invited to come join in and support the host of that challenge. So I'm grateful for that. And I just want to do some shameless plugs, if you guys don't mind, because I really want to have an opportunity to get you involved with the Dubois challenge. One of the things we're hoping to see is that if you go on Twitter and you look at who's participating, it's a majorly code-based um, data visualizations. And I understand that, you know, they have some flexibilities for people to do those kinds of things. But we really hope to see some more Tableau people participate. And so what we are hoping to do, uh, talk to Alan and a few of the other guys there. We've actually got videos, um, tutorials coming out of actually these visits that I did here. And we're trying to see, like, just walkthroughs of what we did and talking through like some of Tableau's functionality so that people actually get excited and want to participate in the challenge and they don't feel as though like this is not a uh these aren't visits that are accessible or buildable in Tableau that's part of what we want to do and so overall you know if you want to kind of get involved with that you can just follow a bunch of us on Twitter um this is the the boy talent itself and these are the hosts and then you know there's a lot of cool stuff that's out there content wise um with respect to Dubois and the reason why I'm highlighting these is because his work is phenomenal I think it's just you know he was way beyond his time but the thing is he's only getting you know into prominence now I feel like and so I just want people like get in there check things out he's got so much amazing things going on that he did way ahead of the curve and if you love database you have to check those out so look at some of these articles they've got links to other articles but in every one you're definitely going to see at least one beautiful portrait from Dubois and so please check those out and we hope to see a lot of participation for the next challenge in February and other than that I hope this has been valuable for you and at this point if you've got like any questions and things like that I'm, I'm happy to talk about things with you Thank you. Great job, Chimdi. Lots of, of more applause here for you. Um, one quick one that was in the Q&A and then I can throw a couple at you. Um, do you use visitor tracking for your public page? And if so, like, what are you using? Do I use visitor tracking? Mm-hmm. As I'm like looking at your followers and things on oh. Tableau Public. Okay, so I'm I'm going to make a serious confession mm. here. It's just not. It's not that I don't care about it. I just don't look at it as often. But every sure. time I come here, I'm really happy because I don't care about social following. But this lets me know that people find value in my stuff, and that to me means a lot. So I don't track it. I just look at, there's that dashboard. Do you mean something like this? Where is it? Where is it? Uh, there's this thing Ken has, right? With our stats and things like that. You know what that is? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's something that I look at to see. But as far as tracking, you know, I don't really track my visitors and stuff like that. I just hope that people find it mm -hmm. and find value. That's what matters to me. 
Does that answer your question? Does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, it definitely does. And speaking of that, you've got six busies, five visits a day. Is that ever part, like how much of that influences the work you're doing versus just trying to do something that's interesting? I've always only wanted to do interesting things. I've always known what the VOT, VO visit of the day was. I never envisioned I would have anything on there. I've always looked at it for inspiration. So when I got the first one, I was like, all right, someone is just kind of being too nice. You know what I mean? And like, I don't know who's nominating these kinds of things because I don't do it, but I, I don't aim for it. I don't think visiting and these kinds of things should really be about like, like, I don't, I understand the value in the award, but I think going for these types of things can really limit you in your creativity and your ability to go deep. So I say, just do what you want to do, do what you're passionate about, explore and experiment and put your love into it. If it's meant to get into a VOTD, it's going to do it, right? But I'll tell you right now, that shouldn't be your motivation to this because it can get really boring if you're doing it to win awards. Awards are just like, awards but your passion i think in my experience that's a lot more rewarding than you know oh i want this or i want that do what you do love what you do that love will shine through and the awards will come to you i think i just rhymed there <laughs> that was very poetic Jim. I, I appreciate i appreciate that yeah. i hope that helps yeah. yeah yeah absolutely it was uh, let me check really quickly before um any resources you suggest to learning about Tableau containers, um, this person finds them particularly challenging. Containers is, I think, is the Florila. I know, okay, Andy Krebel, I hope you said, I'm saying his name correctly. He is probably a good starting point for containers. Um, I really recommend his YouTube channel. The reason why is because he has a lot of walkthrough video formats for how to do basically anything that you want to do in Tableau. There are many people who also do what he does, but I think he's arguably one of those with the most collection of all those resources in one place. So if you go to his YouTube channel and just type containers, you're going to see a list of at least 10, 15, 20 different applications of containers. And I think going through at least a few of those, you'll start to understand the logic behind it, when to use it, and the kind of you know creative stuff we can do with that stuff. So hopefully that helps. But I say youtube.com, Andy Cribble, subscribe and start watching. Yeah, I love that. Um, Jade wants to know, are you team float or team tile? And why? <laughs> Up until recently, I was team floating, obviously because of precision and flexibility. I spoke to Simon Beaumont, and he sort of shared his technique for using um, containers, where you essentially put a background image, and then you float the container on top of that. And so ever since then, I find myself using a lot more containers, and at work right now, because um. I have to sort of standardize some of our design systems with like padding and things like that. I do it all in Tableau. That way when I'm writing it out in our documentation, I can say like 10 pixels for the top, 20 for the bottom, that type of thing. So that's why I use containers. But when you go on my profile, I can promise you majority of the stuff here is going to be floating because I used to be a big fan of that. I'm still a big fan of that. But containers have really risen a lot for me in terms of respect, usage, and value. So it's hard to pick, but I'd say originally team floating, converting maybe to team tiled. Love that. Yeah, I would say I'm probably similar in that for work, totally team tile because it yeah. gets you, it gives you the ability to put everything in its proper place. And people just, I can say, you know, look over here, look over there. But to your point, I would say all, but maybe, I don't know, five or six visits I've ever done have been all float just because I like the flexibility of it. Yeah, so it just depends on what you're doing. Exactly. I know there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of debate on it. Yeah. <laughs> Can go on for days with people in the community talking about that. Absolutely. But thank you so much, Jimmy. I really appreciate it. Lots of, of great fans in the, the chat. Um, 
and we all appreciate the work that that you've been doing. Thank you. Um, I'm gonna grab this back and. Okay, so that's your yeah, a few final things. Uh, here we go. All right. So um, really quickly, appreciate everybody for joining. Just a couple of things before we start to wrap up here. Um, wanted to do a little bit of a review of the year. Uh, we've had an awesome year, um, 35 speakers, uh, including Jim D as a two-time speaker this year, uh, across 10 countries, which I, I think is an incredible. Uh, I think there's very few tugs that are able to get this much um, diversity, and, and that's really something we've been doing really well, which is great. Um, a lot of speak, we got 11 sessions that you can see here. More often than not, we have two or three speakers per session, but uh, in all of them, we've got a lot of really interesting talent. Um, we've got people from Tableau, we've got people from private sector, public sector, um, talking about maps, curves, uh, ask data, what's new in Tableau, containers. We actually have one on containers um, for the person that was looking into that. So we have a session on that um, and just a lot of really great uh, folks. So first of all, thank all of uh, our speakers, but thank you guys because we pull, we pull our speakers together based on what you are interested in. So um, really appreciate that. Um, one other one. One other thing before I go to um, starting to wrap up, I did want to share one quick thing. I just need to get over to it. Uh, our So we've got a user group page that I would love to share with you guys um, just because we um, we keep everything we have. We obviously have a, a ton of information and interesting uh, sessions that happen over time. And so I want to quickly share my uh, desktop here. Yes, I have a bajillion tabs. That's how I keep organized. Um, but inside of the, the user group uh, sessions, we've got obviously the upcoming sessions. So this one will change for January when that happens. But what I wanted to kind of go over as we look back at 2022, every recording we do is available on this screen. So you can see in January, we had a design tips challenge. Um, February, we looked at design and tip, design requirements and templates. Uh, we looked at KPIs in March, map layers. Uh, Jim D talked about one use of map layers. We had a different one in April. May for the person interested in um, talking about Tableau and which uh, Jim D brought up. We've got drill downs and curves in June, um, July. We talked about Tableau prep. Um, Jared is a Tableau prep wizard, so um, we were really happy to have him in July. Um, we take August off. The EU has it as a holiday. It's summer in the US. So um, we took August off, came back in September with some Tableau conference uh, talks. So we did um, one from the Flailers twins in September. October, we did dashboards and benchmarks. And we've included some speeches from um, Autumn and Lindsay during that talk. Uh, and then that brings us to last session in November where we listened to um, Dana Coles, uh, Jackie Moore talked about things she learned in art school and then um, building bad, better dashboards with Tiago, which brings us to today. And we have these awesome speeches. They will end up right here on this page. Um, so actually gonna, while I have it, make sure that you guys can see it. Uh, and you know, if you wanna go back even further, we've got our 2021 recordings as well. Uh, which include things like speed tips, parameters, small multiples, order of operations. I know a lot of people struggle with that, um, creating reference lines, radial charts. Um, there's a lot of really great stuff here. And so uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't reflect back and say we've, we've done a lot of really great sessions and they are available here. Obviously, keep coming to our new ones every month. 
Um, but if there is one you missed, you, you always have them available right here. Um, okay, let me get back to my slides. Um, all right, so with that, I will start to wrap up here a um, little bit early, but speaking of speakers, um, you always have the ability to apply to present if you're interested in speaking. Um, if you have someone you're interested in seeing us talk to and have as a speaker, definitely let us know. We're already in the middle of 2023 planning. We've got speakers lined up for January already. Uh, so we'll be looking towards um, February and beyond. So if you have speakers for that, definitely let us know. You can uh, reach out to me. Um, I'm personally on the other end of your email. So if you got an email to participate, that comes to me. Um, as I mentioned, our next one is in January. That one's gonna be EU and America friendly. So it'll be in the afternoon um, on my side of town in the east, um, on the west coast of the US, it'll be 9 a.m. And then over in um, different parts of Europe, GMT time, it'll be at 6 p.m. Uh, I think that was... Um, I think with that, um, I will stick around in case anyone has any general questions, but um, would say thank you to everybody. Um, really enjoyed the time and we will see you in the new year. Happy holidays to those who celebrate. Uh, really enjoy uh, the time off with friends and family. We will see you all back here in 2023. And I will stop recording. Thanks again, Sadal, for having me. This was fun. <laughs>